Okay, this is a VG 2021M ViewSonic LCD monitor. Here are the tools you're going to need. A half inch putty knife and a bicycle tire removal tool. Don't worry about the tire removal tool if you can't find one, it's not critical. First, remove the monitor's base. Remove any screws that are holding both halves together. Separating the two halves, the front and the rear, are going to be the toughest part of this repair. Once you get them apart, the rest is going to be easy. Turn the monitor upside down, bottom up, front facing away from you. Insert the putty knife in the slot between the front and the rear panels. Push it in a little bit and push the tip down while trying to separate the two halves. Continue down the bottom of the monitor, keeping the halves separated as you go. Once you reach the edge, start on the sides, moving down both sides one at a time. After the bottom is separated and both sides are separated, the rest should be easy. Here's the back of the monitor. You can see the tabs that run along the sides of the monitor that hold the two halves together. The top snaps into the bottom. You want to try to avoid breaking these as you separate both halves. Okay, this cover is what covers the circuit boards, the power board, and the video board. It's typically held on by four screws, and there's a bunch of wires going into it as well. Remove all the connections. You want to take note of where the wires go into the base at. Use a, a felt tip marking pencil and mark which wire goes where so when you reassemble this you'll be able to remember how to reconnect them up properly. Okay, here's the power board and the video board. Examine the power board and take a look at the capacitors. Look for bulged tops on the capacitors. If you see these, there's a good chance your repair job will be successful. What you need for the repair are the capacitors that come with the kit, the solder, and a Radio Shack soldering iron. Make sure that you diagram where everything goes or you will regret it later on. Sometimes you'll have to use an X-Acto knife to split the capacitor from its neighbors. Okay, here's where the fun begins. Pick up your circuit board and examine it. Look at where the capacitors are connected and where their leads protrude from on the opposite side. Take your heated soldering iron and heat up one side of the lead. As you heat it up, push the capacitor from that side over to the side and that way the lead will pop out. Repeat this for the opposite lead. Heat it up. Use a little bit of pressure with your index finger to push the capacitor over to the side. When you do this, the capacitor will pop right out. Don't force a capacitor out that hasn't been completely desoldered or you can damage the circuit board. If you accidentally desolder the wrong thing, it's very easy to just resolder it and everything will be fine. Examine the capacitor and the leads. The negative lead will always be the shorter one. The stripe on the side of the capacitor also indicates which side of the capacitor is negative. When you insert the capacitor into the circuit board, make sure that you insert the negative side into the negative hole. The board should be clearly marked and this is very, very easy. Just make sure that you insert the capacitor properly, negative to negative, positive to positive. If you don't do this, when you power up the board, the capacitor will blow, possibly damaging your circuit board. Just examine the board and you'll see very clearly where the negative and the positive leads go. It's very, very simple to do. After the capacitor has been seated, Turn the board over and bend the leads to the sides. That way the capacitor will be held in place, ready to be soldered in.
Okay, once all the capacitors have been seated, it's time to do the soldering. Heat up the soldering iron and take the solder that came with the kit, hold the solder down by the, uh, the hole, heat up the lead and the solder, and the solder should flow very, very easily around the lead and over the hole, making a nice clean solder joint. As you can see, it takes just a second or so to hold the solder down there, heat it up, and get the solder to flow right around the lead. It takes very, very little solder to do this, so don't use too much. Once all the soldering has been done, just take your snips and cut off each lead right at the top of the solder joint. Just takes a second or so, and this is the last part of the job prior to putting everything back together again. Once you're to this point, you're just about done.